Good everybody. Today in discussing the First World War, we're going to be coming to one of the most pivotal parts of the war, the armistice. What had happened at this point in 1918, literally this week, was Germany realizes that they were, that they did not have anything left. Pretty much all their allies, Bulgaria, Austro-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire had all, had all made peace with the allies, and Germany was the only one left fighting. And so it was decided by Paul von Hindenburg that a civilian by the name of Erzberger would be sent to France to, in order to secure favorable peace terms for Germany. <clears throat> now, Germany had hoped once again that this was going to be done based on Wilson's 14 points. And so what had happened was, on the second week of November 1918, Erzberger and his entourage went uh, into France. They went to the French border, and they went and they crossed through the front lines. Now, what the French did was they purposely took the Germans through the most devastated areas of France to show what had been done by their troops to France and took an extra took a major five-hour detour so and they just showed them the, the horrible mess that had happened at one point they came across an area where some German prisoners of war were being used as a work detail in the area and they were guarded by French troops and they saw the emaciated troops of the uh, state of their of their countrymen and they took what food they had and they tried throwing it to the German troops and the French responded by beating the German prisoners with the butts of their guns and with clubs. Meanwhile the German entourage could just sit there and watch while this was happening. And so they finally made it to a secluded area of France in an area called Compagnie and out in the French woods, area completely secluded. There was a French rail car which belonged to overall Allied commander Ferdinand Foch. Now, he didn't have any sort of authority to treat. His job was to get, make sure Germany agreed to the Allied terms. Wilson had hoped for favorable terms, like all based on the 14 points. France and Britain, as was already mentioned, had their own idea on the matter. And so the, the Germans were actually astounded that the, the French weren't even willing to work with them. And it was also the first time in history that a civilian entourage was sent to negotiate military terms and not the military. And so Foch would not budge at all. And they had to just wind up, I mean, they gave the Allied terms, you have to surrender or else we have to keep fighting. That's what Foch's terms were. You either do exactly what you're told right now or I am authorized to continue the offensive. And they stopped and, they, and, the, and the Germans were conversing amongst themselves and they're actually outside the French rail car at one point and a French civilian ran up and gave him a copy of a French newspaper, which he wasn't supposed to do, but he couldn't resist stating that Kaiser Wilhelm in Germany had abdicated. And so now the, here, there, here's the German entourage wondering, do we even have authority to treat on behalf of a state when the head of state just left, just abdicated? Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm left and he went to the Dutch border and he, and he surrendered to the, guard, the border guard and he never returned to Germany. He would actually die in Holland during the Second World War. And so they had to work out what they were going to do because they, they saw that the um, that the Allies were not going to work with them. And so they wound up having to surrender to these terms. They finally got word from Berlin, which was in utter chaos at the time, to actually surrender. And these were some of the, they got, they got, they got the green light based on the fact that Germany was starving. And they said, just sign us so we can be done with this so we can get food shipments into Germany again. And the terms were outrageous. First off, they had to retreat to the eastern side of the Rhine River and let French troops occupy the western side of the, of the, of the German country, which had been German for centuries. And they had to do all sorts of surrendering. Another thing they had to do, and this is a long list, I have to read it, it's too dang long for me to memorize it. They had to, the Germans surrender 5,000 artillery pieces, 30,000 machine guns, 33,000 short range guns, 2,000 aircraft, 5,000 locomotives, 150,000 railway cars, and 5,000 trucks and its entire submarine fleet. Basically, they were told you have to completely surrender everything, hand over everything. Germany was technically able to surrender most of that stuff. But then here comes what can be almost viewed as the sardonic point of this, of this, uh, this armistice. The Germany was also expected to surrender 140,000 heads of cattle. 
to be gotten from where? Everyone knew Germany was starving. Germany had nothing. And yet they were expected to produce 140,000 heads of cattle to be given to the Allies. And but they held their, the Allies held their ground. They had to do it anyway. So long story short, the German delegation wound up technically agreeing to these terms. And they wound up signing it on, the, on 5 o'clock in the morning on November 11th, 1918, with the agreement that the, that the fighting would stop at 11 o'clock that morning. So it would stop on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And the German delegation, Erzberger, was pleading with Foch, saying, please, stop this bloodshed. It's done. Foch just kept the fighting going. And so it was during those last few hours, actually, that, you know, the French and the British and the Germans reluctantly kept fighting. What's interesting was many of the new American troops that were there wanted to get their honor and their glory. And they decided in the last final hours of the war to start charging them the German machine gun uh, locations. So in the last day of World War I, over 10,000 American troops lost their lives while attacking just because they wanted to be known for fame and glory. So that's pretty much what happened on that. And so they had to sign, a, a sign away all these things and to the French and the British and the Allied command in Ferdinand Foch's rail car on November 11th, 1918. On and almost, how shall we say, I can't find the right word for it, but on a very interesting note, what would happen was in 1940, uh, when during the beginning of the Second World War, when Germany would steamroll through Belgium and Holland into France, and come June of 1940, France would be capitulating and trying to uh, seek negotiation terms with the Germans. Hitler made a good, good scene of this one. They made sure they rolled out the exact same rail car from France, which was now a national museum, and forced the French to surrender exactly the same way to the Germans. The Germans were forced to surrender to the French. And so except for a little difference was, and I'll cover this more when I'm covering Second World War, was that the Germans were going to be occupying France and the French had to pay for the German occupation and a lot of things like that. So, and to, to further humiliate the French, the way the Germans would be humiliated. And so, and afterwards, the Germans blew up the railway car. So much was happening at this point a hundred years ago. So there you go.